For the get to the point review. Right. Hey everyone, welcome to the Get to the Point Review podcast. I am your co-host Kelly McKinney of Hohenheim Productions, and I'm your other co-host Josh Gibson of Fourth Wall Players. And today we are joined by a very special guest, Giovanni Roselli. Mm-hmm. I am saying the last name right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. And uh, he's a nationally recognized fitness coach, presenter, and author, as well as a former WWE wrestler and actor. Ooh. And he joins us here today. I. Um, basically met Giovanni virtually uh, through casting a project seven years ago <laughs> now when I was doing an X-Files feature-length fan My film. wife was cast in that. Yeah, well, we were all cast in that. I, I even played a, a small part. <laughs> um, and basically, with no budget, it never kicked off, but we stayed connected through LinkedIn and everything else. And so now we're having him here as a guest on the Get to the Point Review podcast. All right. And so, Giovanni, how have you been this past year and a half with all of the pandemic re- restrictions and everything else that's been going on? Yeah, and it, well, first, first and foremost, thanks, thanks, for, uh, thanks, thanks for having me. And oh, I believe, I believe uh, there's still an IMDb uh, credit <laughs> for, for that. It is. It's still it there. It's yeah, just... yeah. You know, you committed to the project. It's not your fault it didn't go off, right? Yeah. And, and not only that, but we have, uh, I think, eight scenes from that, you know, from the unfinished film mm-hmm. published, um, at the very least, on the YouTube. So we have proof that we attempted, right? That we yeah. attempted. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so. Because yeah. I had some yeah. random people like, talk to me, like, dude, dude you, you did, did an X Files? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we 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 handled the marketing for it well, yeah. so it, it seems really legit say, for say, anyone who who looks it up. Yeah, it was big in Austria. It so. was big. It was big. In Austria, just randomly. And, yeah, uh, but, yeah, but uh, thank, thanks for asking me on and to answer your question. You know, uh, I use the expression, uh, you know, playing the hand that we're dealt. Um, yeah, you know, we've all been dealt, uh, you know, not a great hand, and we all have different uh, things and obstacles that we're all. Getting through every day, and you know, I have a I have a daughter uh, that I watch, uh, you know, for a large chunk of my day. As my wife does a lot of uh, virtual teaching, she's a teacher, oh, uh, awesome. so she's uh, she's working a lot during the day, and right. uh, guided duty most of most of the day, uh, mm-hmm. middle of the day, especially, um, and you know, just trying to trying to make make uh, make each day the best we can, given right. the situation. Uh, the good thing about the fitness business is, is that uh, you know I can do it from anywhere. I can train. I can train you guys uh, online. Or, right now. You know, Let's go right, right now. now. Let's go. Right now. We're gonna get it right and, now. Uh, you know I can also I could also still do some in-person uh, you know training safely. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still do a lot of writing uh, for, for fitness uh, publications, magazines, blogs, oh. websites, things of that sort. So writing has been something that I've been able to uh, to maintain as well. Uh, I, I think, I think uh, the best attitude to go in with this is, is you know, uh, with the changes that are being thrust upon us, you know, how can we make changes to ourselves, to our lives, and potentially to our careers that are advantageous? So right. that's how, uh, that's how uh, I've tried to look at this situation. And I, right. we're in one in the same mind here. Uh, basically, as soon as the pandemic hit, you know, as content creators, we mm-hmm. said people are going to be clamoring for content. Now is the time for us to buckle down and start creating and make, right. you know, like you know, we saw it as an opportunity more than, and then not only that, but you know, you know, you know, as well as most humans are known for their adaptability. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, the, the strong will survive and thrive uh, no matter what's thrown at them. And it's just part of, and, which is also an excellent lead into basically why we have Giovanni Roselli besides just our film connection, mm-hmm. being that he is a recognized fitness coach and presenter right. we our topic today basically comes down to top five training montages in film and we always start with a recent film review right and for that we chose the way back 2020 and josh mm-hmm. would you like to get us kicked off with uh, your get to the point review sure on this? i will my get to the point review is uh, ben Affleck shines as alcoholic mentor slash basketball coach who works on turning his life around 
Surprisingly, the teenagers in the film don't look 30. Also, a great way for them to, the way they exposited the information throughout the movie was really good, too. I, I loved it that they showed us and didn't tell us. Right. Yeah. And, and to get to the point on the way back for me, I said that the, it's a very powerful Zimmerman baseline, Zimmerman esque baseline, mm-hmm. accentuates the best Affleckking we've seen. <laughs> um, and I, I thought that this is what Christian films should be shooting for. Right. With the realism, because mm-hmm. it disconnects audiences from the message so much when everybody is a perfect Christian, when right. everyone in their day to day lives Which very is not true. rarely yeah. encounters yes. that. Yeah. Um, and still, still a formulaic redemption story, but the redemption is delayed for the coach, and that was very and gratifying. They didn't right. make it. It didn't. It felt more real life than movie in that. It wasn't. Aspect. Yeah, it wasn't all fixed and clean by the end of it, right? right. Like yeah. it was kind of a bittersweet ending. I liked it. Yeah, and surprisingly, no, no training montages, really. None. No, I mean, no you, training montages. Yeah, the montages of them winning games, you know, or playing their games or whatever, but that wasn't really the same thing. And Giovanni, what did you think? Yeah, so, so something pretty interesting too is I've actually met. Uh, that I've liked in the past, mm-hmm. um, and it was actually, you know, very, very, very nice, very kind, uh, and very, uh, you know, giving with his, with his words and very encouraging. So that's something I always remember yeah. whenever I see a Ben Affleck film or, or anything mm-hmm. like that. You know, now being in the in the acting industry and you know, uh, being in you know some uh, decently uh, you know popular films and, and TV shows. You know, I have a great respect for for all the for all the actors. So when I see a review or when I hear someone say, you know, ah, it was okay, it wasn't that great, you know, you'll never really hear me say that. Yeah. Because it's like, do you have any idea how 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 hard that is, how challenging that is, what these what these right. men and women end up going yeah, through for the roles? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe some movies are a little more entertaining than others. Some are. Right. You know, some of them will point, some, some of them hit their, hit their marks, hit their spots, um, you know, a, a little bit better. Um, but, you know, in the end, you know, I think Ben Affleck is a tremendous actor. He's a great actor. Yeah. Um, like I said, I met him several years ago, and I think this film, you know, continues along with with uh, with his with his great acting. And like I said, uh, when uh, when we looked at the review, and, and I've heard some other things about the movie, where it's, ah, it wasn't, wasn't awesome, wasn't great, this or that. And it's like, just appreciate it and enjoy yeah. what it is. There's enough criticism in this world, especially right now. Uh, right. You know, so uh, in the end, I, I, I definitely can't write up a, 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 a nice uh, uh, couple <laughs> sentences like, uh, like that opener. <laughs> It's a, we're professionals. <laughs> you're, uh, you're, you're, you guys are the professional yeah. uh, critics and, and writers, so I definitely can't write up anything uh, to that sort. But, but in the end, I think uh, I think he continues along with his, uh, you know, another great, another great. No, I hope so. Yeah. Right, and, and you know, this this is this is one of those times when it was great to write a get to the point review on this because we always try to take a comedic take Uh but it's always because like we're getting ready to go over the top five favorite training montages in the film it's because we love those films right so it's hard to do the comedic takes well it's it's more of just like you know it's never um it's never truly reflective on the work right itself because the whole point it made our the reason it made our list is because we love the film Right. right and so it was great to kind of get to joke a little bit about this here being that I really love the film it was powerful mm-hmm. and where even so many um, sort of story arcs for a lot of these sort of story you know um, sports redemption films mm-hmm. end up being cliche we don't have I mean we have other than a very loose formula there's nothing cliche about the way that they show us this film right and I mean, when it comes to sports right i mean you only have so many ways you can right yeah yeah you can either, score, you either win the game or you yeah. lose the game uh, especially, yeah. especially especially a sport like how you go about you know writing that and, and acting through that yeah you know is, is, is an art itself but you know in the end you know that you're gonna watch a sports movie and in the end either well, well you can also draw right uh, so you can win it and like a boxing yeah uh, right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. you can draw um, Rocky. But you only have really three options, really two options, uh, uh, you know, plus a, you know, a potential draw depending on the type of sport. So, 
you got to go in there knowing, knowing that. that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That is a finite game. Someone's going to win, someone's going to lose. Yeah. So there's that's only so many outcomes. Kind of the whole point of yeah. force. Well, and, and <laughs> that's one thing that was great about this review, where there's so many critics who want to tear down a film. This one praised it. So we re- we... As part of our Get to the Point review, we also review a popular review over the recent film. Yes. Uh, just to kind of stick it to the other critics, too. And this time we didn't have to do that <laughs> unless, at all. Unless they don't need it stuck to. No, because Chris Agar uh, <clears throat> from Screen Rant. Basically, if you want, we do Get to the Point review for a much better and wordier, comprehensive, accurate, and excellent review of a good sports drama, you should go to the review by Chris Agar on Screen Rant because there was nothing scathing about this. It was all praise. And the it was picking out why it was a great film that he did such a great job Mm -hmm. on. Whether it was influence from the acting, which he said Affleck had a great performance, Mm -hmm. to the directing, to the writing, to even the music and how it all affected and and fell into it was really great. Right. And Josh? Uh, My get to the point review on Chris Agar is... uh, he gives an accurate synopsis on the pieces that really shined in this movie, namely Affleck's performance and <laughs> how the story was told. Um, I can tell he did his homework. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Well, because even when I read the review, I was like, oh, yeah, I should take a look at what else the the, the director's done. Because yeah. I just viewed it as, you know, I'm a fan of Ben Affleck, so let's see a Ben Affleck movie. Mm-hmm. It's a sports drama. Mm-hmm. Could be disastrous. And it absolutely wasn't. Because, it wasn't. No, it was so good. Like the way, like you could see, and I haven't mentioned this yet, but like what really impressed me about it, minus the fact, like you said, they showed, you know, him just like chugging all those beers in the beginning. Like everywhere he went, he had a beer, had a beer. beer can hiding somewhere. Yeah. Um, but like you could really see, like when he walked, when he moved, like it felt like he had like thousand pound weights on his right. shoulder. This wasn't Ben way, Affleck. Like, yeah. This wasn't Ben Affleck acting. This was the character. This was they the character. Intended. Oh, he. Oh this my, was the yeah. character they intended. It was. It was the best I've seen him. And I, I liked him as as Batman too, but like I yeah. think this was like one, like to me was yeah. his best performance that I've seen. Agreed. So I think there's something else to consider is that if you like sports and if you like sports movies. Mm-hmm. You're going to want to like a movie like this. You're yes. Going to want, you, you know, you're going to be more apt to literally want to like a movie because you, once again, like you love sports mm-hmm. anyway. Like you love watching sports, like someone like myself. Mm-hmm. And then you love sports movies. You love the underdog stories. Yeah. And, you know, uh, you know all, all the movies over the years. So you have a, already an emotional investment to wanting the movie to be be entertaining right and to, right and, and to and to have a good story and to have a good plot so i think it in the end too there's probably all the sports fans um that watch sports movies such as this and before and after a movie like this um you're you're, you're gonna have a, a desire to be like this is gonna be good or i right. hope this is gonna be good right. um, that's not always the case um because a lot of uh, you know we have a lot of critics that are also pessimistic right. um no. People go, into, <laughs> no. people go into movies and to other things they're, in life, they're, like already they're, saying this is going to be bad. They want to tear it down. It's yeah, stuck. yeah. They're um, looking for the you know, issues. But, but but for the most part, you know, someone like myself, and hopefully there's a lot more uh, people like me out there that are going into a movie like this, being like, man, I can't wait for this. This is going to be good. It's about sports, and I love sports, so let's let's do it. And yeah. Let's, and let's get and let's get lost in it for a couple hours. Right. And just right. in general, like I don't understand why people would go to something like that if they are determined, or even watch something like that if they're determined not to like it. Well, if, Like, right? You know, I, I've, just from things I've studied in the past, I feel like that goes back to psychological reasons. You know uh, what I mean? It's usually an insecurity about themselves, but they're willing to take the time out of their day to mm-hmm. tear something else down. To feel better. How about, awful yeah. must they feel about their own lives, right. their own situations, or their own contributions to society right. and everything else? And... You know, and, and it's because of great training montages in film that we can pull ourselves out of these slugs. Right. To segue into the main chunk of, the main our, chunk of our the main chunk of our, of our podcast. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Which would be, of course, our top five training montages in film. And I think Gio, would you like to kick us off with your number one favorite top training montage in film? Yes, and and you know, 
just so all the listeners out there know that you know we have not communicated about our own. Oh. No. Uh oh. Uh oh. Zoom froze. Zoom froze. Uh, oh. Okay. Oh. There we go. I, I, I don't know where you, where you lost me, but I said, you know, we did not discuss this beforehand, so there may be there may be some carryover. Maybe like probably oh, will dude, be. You took my two, three, and four. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. When, I, you, when you're talking about top training montages, there's some know, pretty iconic obviously ones. Obviously, there's some that that yeah. come to mind. Yeah. Um, you know, very. very I tried. Cool. I tried to dress like Rocky. Right. This is my. I don't. <laughs> I, I never wear like ever. You know, ever. Ever. Yeah. He was like, oh wow. Yeah, I okay. Was like, what? Yeah. Wow. I was like, I'm doing my best Rocky like, today. Yo, like, Adrian. I was like, you know. you're glowing, Kelly. Yeah, I'm, glowing. I'm glowing. Yeah, because I'm showing my arms. It's <laughs> it happens. You know, I'll spend some time in the snow or something. Yeah. But, so speak of the speak of the devil. I'll, I'll start <laughs> off, and I'm gonna go with Rocky two. There you go. See. <laughs> Now I like I like Rocky two as my number one because Rocky one he's running through um, and then runs up the stairs but Rocky two all the kids are behind yeah that and is really that cool. it's that moment of euphoria where he's on the steps and all the kids are on the steps you know and and in, in Rocky two he's more well known so everyone. You know, everyone's clapping him along the way. In Rocky One, he's just kind of running down. It's right. still a great montage, right? Yeah. And he's and he's working out in the gym with Mickey and, and boxing and everything like that. I just I just think Rocky Two is so much more uh, powerful with with all the added elements. Mm-hmm. And you know, one of my favorite moments in, in Rocky Two is right before uh, the montage where he's at the hospital with Adrian and she's in the coma, and then she finally wakes up. And then she she says that that line she delivers it so well. He, she goes, "There's one thing I want you to do." He goes, "What? Win." And then you hear the bomb, yeah, bomb. And then it, his eyes go. And then Mickey's like, "Well, what are we waiting for?" <laughs> it's like, "Oh yeah, you know." It's like that. That is that is that moment um, yeah. where it still you know it still it still gets me and it still gets you know a lot of us. Yeah, Sylvester Stallone is an amazing filmmaker. Like, mm-hmm. hands down. Like, you know, I, I feel like so many people that, is, I mean, especially people who don't work in the industry, but yeah. people are just that more fans, fans of entertainment and film. <clears throat> I'm not sure they realize he wrote all those Rocky films. Mm-hmm. Like, it, most of the films he is involved in, he wrote and produced. Yeah. You know, and he's responsible for the whole reason we're having this conversation about training montages. Right. He invented the, the three minute training montage. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's, it's amazing. He is super impactful when it comes to, to, to sports films. And I, I commend your choice. I love it. And which brings me right into, and I went in order as far as year. So okay. starting with 1982, Rocky three. There you go. And I chose this one as one of my favorites, not my top favorite. Cause I put them in order of year. But one of my favorites because you have great music and some Harlem training turns Rocky into basically Muhammad Ali. And <laughs> the sort of boxing fan that I am, for him to learn how to box yeah. was like, that's what I've been waiting for. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a Rocky I can get behind. Like, mm-hmm. I want him to beat everybody now because he can dodge every punch. He's got a consistent mm-hmm. work of the jab. Like, I love it. You know, it's it's the sort of, you know, I mean... Roberto Duran was very aggressive, but he's still one of my favorite boxers, and he he moved around the ring. You yeah, know, he moved around the ring pretty well, um, as as well as uh, Roy Jones Jr. Mm-hmm. You know, some of my favorite boxers they they all move really well, and so to see Rocky go into that, uh, and to get to the point about overall summarizing the movie here, I said the third installation in this inspiring franchise decides it should start boxing in the third boxing movie. <laughs> <laughs> And Josh? Uh, my get to the point review uh, was the first Rocky movie. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're going to cover all of them by the time it's over. All of them. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the training montage to influence all training montages. How inspiring was it during the run up those steps? It makes me want to buy a treadmill every time I watch it. <laughs> I don't, but it makes me want to. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I had to go with it because, you know, how iconic it was as a scene. Like, I was yes. kind of on the fence about it, but I, I yeah. decided to put it in there. It's like you just got to go with it. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, and my, I was not prepared to be this clever in my. In my <laughs> I'm, very, very, I'm very tame. I'm very tame in my lists and 
abuse here. Sorry. Yeah, well, we've been doing this for like four months now, so yeah. we, it's, it's old hat for us. <laughs> it's practice. No, but uh, uh, we're just happy to have your choices, yeah. to have your input. But because right. uh, I I tend to be fluid in my um, in mine, and he goes a little more straight laced. So we get more mm. of the straight laced answers here uh, with uh, with a guest mm. added in. So right. it's it's for the best. And with that, Geo, you have your next one. I do. Let's, Let's get, get off Rocky for a little bit. <laughs> okay. And what also has to be up there is one of my all-time favorite movies as well is The Karate Kid. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I didn't think about that one. Yeah. It, it, was, it was on my list um, that was basically eliminated because I had a list of about 11 movies yeah, it was hard that I had five. to <laughs> narrow down to five on what it was. Karate mm-hmm. Kid was on there, but so was uh, a couple of the training montages from Cobra Kai season mm-hmm. one. I don't know if you've seen Cobra Kai yet. Love it. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's great, right? You know, it's, um, it makes it basically the nostalgia of Karate Kid uh, accessible to my children, something that I can watch with them because it's so you know PG and really mm-hmm. about the action you know kind of thing. We don't we don't it doesn't get it's it's very um, tame. Yeah, it is. I mean, well, the the newest season felt sort of campy, mm-hmm. um, but I love the show. Man, it is great. It's really great. So that that one almost made my list too. Um, anyway, <laughs> going next though, I mean, I think what Karate Kid. I can't remember exactly what year it was, but I think it's right in between where my next one goes, which sort yeah, of nineteen eighty four. Right. So we go from eighty two, eighty four to eighty seven. Dirty Dancing. Okay. A sexy training montage. Need I say more? I mean, honestly, uh, because this nope. Dirty Dancing, Hungry Eyes, the training mm-hmm. montage when she's learning how to dance it's like i loved that you know uh i get to the point review summary on the movie alternatively titled jews can't dance jennifer gray and patrick swayze set high marks to beat for romance films for decades to come like it's great and you know the jews can't dance is like white men can't yeah jump. white men can't jump I yeah <laughs> but I in it. the 80s you know the, the alternatively titled mm-hmm. um but yeah, I love this movie. It's been like literally one of my favorite movies of all time right. since growing up. Mm-hmm. Like, I was probably watching it way younger than I should have been. Right. For and sure. uh, I I apologize, Giovanni. Did we not let you actually do your get to the point review on the Karate Kid? Uh, Kelly kind of Kelly kind of <laughs> stepped over a little. Bit. Oh, no. <laughs> like, oh no! Go go ahead and take a second. And give that to us. Yeah. No, I, I mean when you. When you watch You're the Best Around, right, and you hear that, that music start, and then before it starts, um, Daniel's girlfriend, Elizabeth Shue, yells, Daniel, you're the best! Yeah. And then it starts. Yeah. Right? Um, I, I'm waiting, speaking of Cobra Kai, I'm waiting. You know how intelligent the writers are. You yeah. know they're going to put that song back in Cobra Kai. Oh, they're yeah. just fine. It could be, maybe it's going to be the season four when they have the, you know, the, new, the new tournament. Right. Um, but you know that Cobra Kai is gonna gonna bring that back, and it's gonna be at, right at right at the perfect time. Mm-hmm. You know, having uh, you know having a childhood where I was actually bullied, and I I didn't have that great of a, a childhood. You know, having that movie and seeing that movie, especially around the age um, that I was growing up in, mm-hmm. in the eighties, you know, is is it means a little bit more to you. So you're watching him go through Cobra Kai, uh, you know, student by student by student, and then he's starting to escalate, and you know, everyone's starting to cheer and clap, and he's and he's smiling, and, and you know, he's getting his confidence, uh, and then you know, the the subtle Mr. Miyagiisms where, uh, you know, right after the song, you know, and he's like, "Wow, I didn't think I'd make it this far," and Mr. Miyagi like, "Oh." I didn't think so either. And then I hope you survive. And he's like, what do you mean survive? What do you mean? You know, how, how you know, Wait, Mr. Miyagi, um, you know, has the best, you know, just kind of little comments here and there. And then when he gets to the tournament, he steals the black belt mm-hmm. because he's like, Oh, what, 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 what belt is uh, your student? He's like, what does it matter? And he's yeah. like, uh, this, this is for Brown or above. And he's like, Oh boy, black belt, black belt. And then he ends up stealing, you know, the black belt and gives it to Elizabeth Shue, gives mm-hmm. it to, gives it to Allie. So, you know, the, the entire, the entire movie, um, 
this is obviously something that has lasted uh, throughout the course of time. Yeah. And now that it gets to transcend, you know, into Cobra Kai. And I heard that they're already, uh, you know, pretty much signed for through season five. Wow. Um, you know, which is, which is, which is great. And yeah. <laughs> Um, a little campy, but I think that was, I think that's what they were going for. Like, it is. I don't think they right. were, yeah. know, at some points it was, it was supposed to be a little cheesy. At yeah. some points it was supposed to be a little, a little corny. Right. But hopefully everyone has seen it, uh, you know, uh, by now. So I won't give too many, uh, no, we do spo- we yeah we do spoilers all the time. We, we and we yeah we do spoilers we do spoilers anyways and, and we figure being that the spoilers are in a get to the point review fashion they yeah. they're vague enough. And, yeah. And to go to my first for my first two films, everyone has to admit that at some point in your lives you have done exercise to the Rocky theme song and to you're the best around. Right. Uh, at least twice a week. I have I have a three time a three time a week. In, uh, it was just in a Super Bowl commercial. If you guys <laughs> saw any of that, and the first thing you think of, oh yeah, you're the best around. Like they, they, there's, it's still it's still living. It's still going. So, yeah. Uh, and, and actually, I don't know if you guys know this. Um, you're the best around was originally uh, supposed to be in Rocky. I don't yeah, know, the, I that? actually actually that's that's what I, I was thinking that. when you mentioned that. I was like, I thought that was Rocky, but no, you're right. That no, was the. It was, but, I, but I definitely remember. Yeah. So you're Karate. the best around was almost. If I have my story straight, and I may not, because um, mm-hmm. I've been hitting the head a lot as a wrestler, um, <laughs> but you're the best around was possibly going to take the place of I the Tiger. Yeah, I, that, that's what I remember hearing. And they went with I the Tiger and said, so then you're the best around. Karate Kid picked yeah. that up and said, we'll put it in. Put it in They're both great songs. It would be kind of weird, right? Wouldn't it be kind of funny if you watch Rocky Three and it'd be you're the best around? Right. Yeah, yeah. that'd be so weird. And yeah. Watching watching the Karate Kid, uh, you know, montage at the end, it would be a song other than you're the best around. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm glad everything worked out. It'd be especially weird because for like most of my high school years, I modeled my workout after the montage in Rocky Three, and so <laughs> I played I, pl- I played the Eye of the Tiger. A lot during my workout. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. Okay, so uh, yeah, my next one? get to the point review is on Team America. Uh, Team America. Okay. Not going to lie, this was hilarious. Uh, way to poke at the overused trope of getting better over the course of a three minute song. I love the lyrics, too. Uh, even Rocky had a montage. <laughs> even Rocky had a montage. Oh, boy. Yeah, uh, yeah I just. I thought that'd be fun to put wow. in there. Wow, I didn't, Just I didn't break think the of that one. Yeah. I didn't think of that one. Uh, That's very interesting. Was, was, I, I, always, I always think of it when people talk about montage. I think of that lyric. That even right. Rocky had a montage. <laughs> montage! <laughs> yeah. I did not have that one. I, and do I have any comedies? <laughs> I don't have any comedies online. I thought That's it'd be a, different, so I put it out there. One. That's a good one. Nice. I like it. Giovanni, your next one? <laughs> Oh, it's back to me. Yeah, um, sure. Is. Because I'm we skipped you the last with, time. I'm going to go with. Not it. There, there is a pretty good montage in there. It's, it's not uh, as well known as the Rocky Karate Kid, um, but I'm going to go with Rudy. 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 Yeah. Rudy. Oh yeah. Rudy. Right, and and I like it. I like it because it's him, obviously working very hard, and I understand and appreciate the fact. Of working so hard to create athleticism and right. being an underdog, mm-hmm. and I also like too part of the montage. He uh, he he takes a hit and then he bumps into the girl that kicked him off of the uh, uh, off of the uh, of the club when he was just trying to be you know spray paint the helmets and he was trying to just be any any part of the team. And she's like, you, "You're not you're not a student here." Uh, you can't be part of our. You can't be a part of our club. And then he ends up uh, in uniform yeah. on the field practicing. And then mm-hmm. he ends up, uh, you know, rolling over to her, stands up, and goes, "Hey, I remember you." And she's like, "Oh my God, you're a football player now." <laughs> um, so you know, just you know, you gotta love Rudy. I yes. mean, if you don't love Rudy, then then there's really something wrong. There's with something you. You wrong gotta with love you, yeah. the story. <laughs> maybe maybe obviously the story was, you know, slightly you know tweaked. Uh, mm-hmm. for, for, for movie purposes yeah. but the fact that that actually happened mm-hmm. makes you appreciate that movie so much more right. and, and I think Sean Austin did, did a great job and I, you know you think of Sean Austin you think of the Goonies and you think of Rudy 
Um, and and Lord, of the, Lord of the Rings. And Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I, I think of Goonies first, though, mm. for sure. And then I also think of uh, Small Soldiers. Oh, yeah, Small Soldiers. Yeah. I've always thought Rudy, one. but... Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, but love Sean. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. Yeah. I agreed. Love that one. Yeah, and w- another great thing about that montage is that where so many training montages are about them getting better in Rudy, it's about his heart affecting the rest of the team. You know what I mean? About yeah. people getting better because he always tried so hard. Yes. And about how, like, which is, you know, leads back to the way back. Mm-hmm. I loved the, the chaplain in the movie, you know, yeah. he, he's like, he's like, he's like, yes, I do give that, you yeah. know, about what you say. Yeah. And, don't underestimate the power you have influencing these children. Right, right. And right. that kind of became what you as an audience started watching for was, is he going to influence these children in a good way? Mm-hmm. And he did. It was great. He did, yeah. Um, I guess that brings us to my next one, right? Yes. Which would be 1998 Mulan, the original Mulan. Let's get down to business. Let's get down to business. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the music that made the original so well-rounded. Uh, because the remake was way too serious. Yeah. And to basically summarize in a get-to-the-point review fashion, the overall movie... Spoiler alert, it was 1998. If you haven't seen it right now, I can't help you, all right? Uh, but is this early Disney anime? Because it's not for the amazing musical element. Uh-huh. This plays like an animated action film. And yeah. that's part of what made it so great. You wanted to that's... root for Mulan. So then when you've got the, you know, the, the uh, commander singing a song... Mm-hmm as well like it was great it was really well done it's 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 a lot tougher to do a musical training montage and mulan pulls it off yeah oh yeah they do it's uh, another one that's just great yeah um okay so my next get to the point review bringing it back uh rocky four um (laughs) we are going through all the rockies aren't we i i had to do a second rocky one just because they're all so iconic um and uh i uh the intense training he does in the snowy mountains fills me with just complete awe. I can't even walk to my car and back in the snow without needing a breather. This guy's <laughs> running up and down a freaking mountainside. And, I, oh, God, that's such, that, that, for some reason, I remember that in the first one. Those are, like, the two strongest ones in my memory. But Yeah. And Ivan Drago. And Ivan Drago. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because of the... Um... The extreme patriotism. Four yeah. Is okay. Not, well, four that is just arcs. not my favorite. Yeah. I mean, the overall, because, the movie wasn't that great. I just liked because, the training sequence. Because Apollo died, and that. Oh, and me. Apollo Creed died. Oh, why did they remind me? <laughs> Spoiler alert again. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> again. Oh man. Giovanni, are you gonna? Are you gonna? So, so total total transparency. That was that was my next one. Ah. Very good. <laughs> and, and you know there are several. Not just one. There are several great training montages. There are, yeah. Mm-hmm. In Rock Four, and you know, I think the one that sticks out for me is when they go back and forth between technology and farm, right? Right. Where, where yeah. they show Drago doing something on a machine, and they show Rocky simulating something the same way, just right. with a rope or a stick or a, an axe or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I agree. With I thought you. that was uh, that was very well done, and a lot of those songs too. We have to admit. Or have been in our uh, have been in our radio cassettes, iPods, yeah. um, and and on the radio as far as as far as getting you uh, getting you motivated. Definitely right. on the workout or playlist. On an exercise. Yeah. So when it comes to training montages, whether you uh, really like the film or not, the the training montages are are really some of the most iconic and some of the best. And like I said, the cool part exactly. is there's, there's even more than one. There there's several really good. Uh, you know, training montages right. as well. One of them is not even a really training montage. It's when he's driving in the car um, uh, and he's going through all the flashbacks of Apollo dying. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even when in Rocky One, they, they have flashbacks through all the first uh, first three first three Rockies and in the beginning of of Rocky Four. I'm trying to think of the song. I should know the song. I love Rocky. Um, right. <laughs> who doesn't? Um, but, uh, no easy way out. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you yes. go. Yeah. Right? Yes. So the, you know, that's, that's not really a training montage, but that's the training montage in itself. And, you know, he's driving in the car. There's no easy way out. I mean, come yeah. on. Who hasn't, yes. who hasn't gotten pumped up uh, for that? <laughs> um, yeah. So, 
You got awesome. you got to put Rocky Four on the list, yeah. right? Oh, there we go. Then there's the overlap. All right. <laughs> there's the overlap. There we Please. go. Um, next, we went from 1998 to 1999 <laughs> for the Matrix, because this montage almost parodies the heart of the montage and that a montage leads us to believe that over the course of a motivating power ballad, we can go from zero to hero here. We just download awesomeness in a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's like almost parodying the training montage, but still providing us with a really cool training montage because of the, you know, wire foo that was basically innovative at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I don't really think I need to summarize this movie. If you don't know how great it is, you need to unplug. Right. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Matrix reference. There you go. Uh, uh, all right. Boom, 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 boom. Nice. All right. Uh, well, <laughs> my next get to the point review uh, to for the kids out there uh, is Angels in the Outfield. Um, I don't know why, but I really enjoyed oh, baseball montages in the 80s and 90s movies. Uh, this one was made fun by watching angels control the players like marionettes. I'm not sure if that classifies as cheating, but Danny Glover was definitely too old for that shit. <laughs> or, or it's training, right? Like, yeah, but that's, uh, that's it's interesting because that's you're right. It's the training. I mean, it's essentially a training montage. They're getting used. To, the boy is getting used to yeah. telling the angels what to do. Right. 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 Wow, I didn't think about that one. Huh. Another one, I, it was between that and Major League for my baseball one, because I was like, Major League had a pretty good one, too. Major League. Yeah, that was the one that's uh, all females, right? The no, female that's, that's League of Their Own. That League was a good one, own. too. Shoot, Gosh, I didn't even think about that one. That's a really good one. I love that, that no. uh, baseball movie. That yeah, Major really League's like Charlie Sheen and Tom Berenger and Wesley Snipes. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay. Before Man, the tax Those are all good. <laughs> I, I, I suddenly want to spend a day watching baseball movies yeah. <laughs> from the 90s. But yeah, the 80s and 90s. That's, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And Giovanni, the be what would should be the last one on your list? I think so, yeah. So I have like I had like one and then I had like a one one B in case. Um, I'm gonna mention two movies. Okay. Neither of them that I'm really in love with, that I, I don't like love these two movies, but I feel like they probably should be at least recognized. Um, I, I couldn't give you a, a, a big uh, review of them, even though they're pretty iconic. One of them is Footloose. Mm-hmm. Another one is another one is Staying Alive. Right. So when you think about, it's not really training montages, right? But, no, but it's still, you know, you this see is them, you from see a them fitness get instructor, over right? the so a fitness instructor that appreciates good movement, that appreciates good rhythm, mm-hmm. but appreciates good athleticism. So when you talk about appreciating all of those things, then you have to put, you know, Footloose and you know, Staying Alive, uh, Staying Alive on that list, right. just from from a purely uh, respectful uh, uh, standpoint. There. That's exactly why Dirty Dancing made mine. Yeah, right. you know, yeah, right. same same thing. Athleticism, grace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and oh yeah, I guess we're to me, aren't we? Yes, oh, you wow. know. All right. Well, my last one, as new as I got on my list, was 2002. <laughs> that's as recent as I got on my list was 2002 with the Count of Monte Cristo, because who better to teach you how to be a count than Dumbledore? <laughs> yeah. It's literally a prison montage of him training yeah. how to read, write, arithmetic, as well as training mm-hmm. in sword combat, Such a learning story. about economics. It's yeah. awesome. It is one of the best classic books, mm-hmm. book to film adaptations with a stunning and memorable cast that I'd recommend to literally any yeah. middle school or high school lit mm-hmm. teacher. Like mm-hmm. it's, it provides an excellent study of the book as well because right. of how much they cover in it. Yeah, it's pretty true to the book. Yeah, it's great. Uh, my last one, I'm going to do this off the top of my head because I just thought about it while we were talking. My last <laughs> get to the point review is uh, Grudge Match. So another Sylvester Stallone. Okay. But I like... I've seen that one. Yeah. Um, no, the fact... You you watch these two, like, 70-year-old men who just go out and just start... You, and I get it's part of the movie, so it probably wasn't as crazy to them as it was in the movie. But the idea of the two 70-year-old men that go out and just and just, like, kill themselves every day to get themselves back into fighting shape to do one match and and like it's it's so great like to think <laughs> it's being a, 70 it, years old and like you know hit, like they even had the joke where like they wanted uh Sylvester Stallone to like punch the meat the hanging meat or whatever and he's like and they're like we're not gonna do that what are you crazy like it's just yeah like, right yeah uh, I remember that. yeah it's okay. uh I remember that from the trailers yeah 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 no, it's, it's it's it was really fun and it was it was pretty um not even fun like even like De Niro you could tell his body shape changed 
over the course of filming. And he was always – he's kind of underrated as far as like what he did physically for his roles earlier in his career. You know, like you see yeah. like um, Raging Bull and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so I, I just thought it was really impressive. I, yeah. I, I don't have anything else to say about it. I have, yeah, and I have, I have yet to see that one. Have you seen Grudge Match? I have not seen that. Now, uh, that, now that you, now that you mentioned that, you know, when when the trailer first came out, I was like, yeah, we need to watch that. Mm-hmm. See, it? and then it kind of uh, it got away from me. But yeah, that, that needs to be on my list. I mean, again, right. it's kind of one of those that's got some issues with the movie, but I think it's if. You know, it's one of those. If you go into it with a good attitude, and yeah, you'll enjoy it. it well, yeah, and like this is one of those things where when I I can't stand critics for the most part because if you go into a, a rom com, mm-hmm. you need to expect to be seeing a rom com, right? So when you you know when you tear it apart because it wasn't an Academy Award winning mm-hmm. drama. Did you not know that it was a rom com? Right. Or did you expect it to like not everything is a you know be guys. mislabeled? Yeah, not everything <laughs> is atonement. Not everything is atonement, guys. Not everything can be atonement. Right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and so for our uh, get to the point, the way that we like to sort of wrap this up, our last little segment essentially uh, ends up being a get to the point review of. A particular. Should we do Sylvester Stallone? We're going to do Sylvester Stallone. Because we mentioned a particular him like six Twitter times, handle. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Easily Sylvester Stallone, which I had right up on here. Um, yeah. Which, if you would like to take a look at Sylvester Stallone's Twitter, that is at the Sly Stallone. And basically, I've been taking a look at this for a couple of days. Yeah. He posts a new Instagram photo or video. <laughs> Every hour, really? Well, probably <laughs> not, him. not. Probably not has a him. team of people that does every, it. But. Every, every, but it's it's really great. Like this is one we've got right now. Is uh, this is exactly what an unemployed, going nowhere fast, twenty two year old actor slash writer living in a seventy one dollar a month apartment looks like? There's always a way out if you want to get out. There's always a way up if you really want to go up. And it's a picture of him from mm-hmm. obviously the seventies. Yeah. You know, like before probably Rocky. right before Rocky. Yeah. Right before mm-hmm. Rocky. And uh, it kind of goes right back into what we've been saying uh, since the beginning, since we introduced Giovanni, that it's being adaptable and and hungry enough mm-hmm. and you can you can do what you want. You know, um, you can accomplish your goals and your dreams and we make things work, right? Uh, it all takes hard work. And gosh, if anyone knows hard work, it's Sylvester Stallone. That is for right. sure. Right. Oh, yeah. And it's, interesting to see, it's interesting to see who he follows. Uh, who does he follow? Who does he follow? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Uh, now. James James Buster Douglas. Oh, okay. Michael Strahan. He's only following thirty three people. Uh, so it's always interesting to see when you have like yeah, like who millions, did you choose? Of followers. Yeah. Uh, what are the thirty three people? Oh, Shawn Michaels, WWE wrestler. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that is. That's very interesting. And um, I wonder, Steve okay, Martin. was was Shawn Michaels in any of the Expendables movies? No. No. no he was I not. wonder if he's casing him for the You're next Expendables. <laughs> I wonder if he's casing him for the Hulk next Hogan Expendables. Hulk Hogan and Shawn Michaels. And- you know, I mean, because picture if you're Shawn Michaels and Sylvester Stallone starts following you on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> you go, huh. It was I Shawn. wonder why. He's friends with a lot of my other friends. He's following Randy Couture. That makes perfect sense. I yeah. know they're good friends. Same thing with Arnold. And Dolph. Mm-hmm. Steve Austin, as in the Steve Austin, yeah. too. Yeah, that's he was in the original he's... Expendables. And John Favreau. You know, Everyone this is what's funny. John I, I feel like I need to be following most of who he's following. Yeah. We'll go ahead and click follow here yeah. on quite a few of these. <laughs> good call, Gio. That was, a great, that was a great observation. Yeah. I didn't think about that. I'm going to always look at who the celebrity is following from mm-hmm. now on. That's mm-hmm. great. That's really great. Um, and so, Gio, thank you so much for being with us here today on yeah. the show. It's, it was great. You know, It's a lot of fun. Honestly, the first time you and I have had uh, some FaceTime, even though we had connected seven years ago, um, <laughs> casting for a fan film. Yeah. Uh, it's been great. Uh, 
I'm so happy with my casting decision. <laughs> it could be. Well, I'm so I'm so waiting for the residual checks. <laughs> Aren't we all? Snag <laughs> after us. Aren't so we all? About know, that. We should start a petition. <laughs> we should start a petition about that. There you yeah. Because um, <laughs> we we're all waiting for the residuals on that <laughs> one. <laughs> um, and as uh, as a thank you, we roll out the red carpet to you to say. Let uh, our audience know what you've got going on in your life, what we can be looking forward to seeing from you, um, whether that's on LinkedIn or any of your other mediums. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm pretty easy to find. My full name is Giovanni Roselli. So if you just uh, plug that uh, social media handles and things of that sort. Had a couple of pretty good uh, virtual auditions. Didn't book them, but, you know, that's the that's the way that's, it works. So you yeah. keep plugging away and you, you never stop. Um, you know, that that's something that I'm going to be doing, you know, as long as I feel like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, doing it. it you know, it's, it's funny, too, because people always ask me about wrestling and, and acting and, and fitness. And, you know, th- there's a window that kind of closes in wrestling. You know, yeah. From, from a, you know, unless you're like Ric Flair. There's yeah. Are like a yeah. Bunch of, you know, guys that can wrestle in their fifties and sixties. Yeah. Um, but the nice thing about acting is, is that when I turn 50 one day, there's going to be a need for a 50 year old Italian act, you know, right. actor. Right, right, so, right. You know, that's the nice thing about acting. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there, there's not really many 50 year old, uh, you know, professional wrestlers. Um, so when, when it comes to, when it comes to that, um, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic uh, you know, about my, uh, about my acting career and, you know, my fitness career is something that's continued to continue to take off. I do a lot of online, uh, courses for, you know, general population as well as the fitness community. So I provide continuing education, uh, to fellow, you know, trainers, um, and, and colleagues in that respect. But I also obviously do a lot for, you know, those who are looking just to, to get more fit. Uh, I try to call myself a health coach, because it's much more than exercise. It's much more than a half an hour workout. It's much more than fitness. There's a lot of pieces to the puzzle that are involved. So I'm, I've been slowly evolving into, into what I like to call, you know, more of a health coach, um, right. more than, more than just a, a personal trainer. Right. I feel like I've put in a lot of time and effort into, into doing that. Um, so, so I continue to try to evolve as a, as, as a health coach and, and try to help as help as many uh, many individuals as I can. Right, and, Sweet. and that's awesome. Because there's a lot there's a lot that goes into health as well, whether that's mentally, spiritually, yeah. you know, as well as physically. Mm-hmm. So being able to coach in and mentor and guide people along those lines towards health rather than just towards fitness. You know, because fitness fitness is just physical, and you can you can you can tone your body and it, it may not help uh even internal physical issues if you don't get your mind right you right know, and your spiritual way so that's awesome i love that and we'll definitely be providing all of those links below with both the video version of the podcast as well as the audio for mm-hmm. those of you who are listening and we'd also like to thank blinks gaming blinks is a brain boosting peak performance energy supplement stacked with a high grade nootropic formula to enhance focus, boost energy, reduce stress, and enhance mental acuity. It comes in two awesome flavors, sour raspberry and citrus grapefruit. Find our affiliate link in the description below to find and order samples. And curious about the behind the scenes merch and movies that aren't on YouTube? Get exclusive access to movies, merch, and more through Patreon. Find Fourth Wall Players at patreon.com slash fourth wall players. That's patreon.com slash four T H wall players. All one word. You know, we've already got all of the. All of I love doing this. Oh. They're fun. I don't know why radio uh, ads are so fun, but they're they're fun. I enjoy well, reading them all. Yeah, th- thanks again for coming on with us, and it was a blast. I had a fun yeah, time. That was great. No, thanks. Thanks for having me. And next time, if I ever do this again, I'll I'll try to be more witty with my. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we bring our A game, kind of. Well, B minus, B minus. B minus, B minus. But you, you also just you also asked me about you know training montages, so I went straight to the yeah. you know potatoes, you know best sports movies, you know really of all time. Yeah, so. yeah. Absolutely. And I had a feeling that between the three of us, most of those would be covered. So I, I that's why I also tried. to We get only had one overlap, right? Rocky that, yeah. four randomly. Yeah. 
That's yeah. really the only overlap yeah, between we had. Two. Yeah, because then we had Rocky 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's great. Rocky 5 never gets to Let's get to the point.